I really need people to understand that this is coming. This is happening. They have already started working towards eradicating um, abortion ban exceptions for women's lives. Without access to the proper reproductive health care that they need, women are dying. Women who are pro-life, women who are pro-choice, it doesn't matter. Complications can and will happen to anyone, and they are dying. There's a lot of gaslighting going on. There's a lot of telling women, oh, it's not that bad. Those complications are super rare. Oh, we're just making it a state's issue. We're not banning abortion altogether. But the problem is banning abortion itself puts women in danger, uh, as we've already seen. But that is just step one of what they're doing. Texas won't be reviewing maternal deaths in the first two years after its near total abortion ban went into effect, likely to cover up the fact that women are dying because of it. The Texas Maternal Mortality and Morbidity Review Committee has said its decision to ignore the first two years and the backlog of cases it has to review is in an effort to be more contemporary, whatever that means. As a member of the committee points out, skipping over these years does an incredible injustice to women who have died because of Texas's ban. Ah, uh, the good old. If we don't tell people about it, it never happened. If we cover up the fact that women are dying because of these abortion bans, then we can just keep the abortion bans and we can make them stricter and we can impose other strict laws against women that we've wanted to do for some time. Between 2019 to 2022, the first year after the abortion ban, maternal death rates skyrocketed in Texas by 56%. The committee's job is to look into why that is, including if the ban on abortion had any contributing factors. We already know three names, Portia Gumazi, Nevea Crane, and Jolisi Barnica. So what do we do? If you live in Texas especially, call your representatives and demand that they let the committee do its job. 56%. It went up. 56%, 56% more mothers were dying in the wake of these strict abortion bans because doctors weren't allowed to save them, weren't allowed to intervene. So they were left to die. 56% more mothers are dying. And the board whose job it is to review why that's happening, because that's a lot, a big number. You know how many people are in Texas? That's a lot of people. The board whose job it is to research why that's happening is not allowed to research why that's happening. Now, why do we think they're not allowed to do their job and research why so many citizens are dying? Hmm, gosh, it's almost like if you prove that the abortion bans are dangerous for women, are dangerous for mothers, you'd have to walk them back, maybe. It's not very pro-life of them. That's what I have to say. If you only care about the fetus, and you don't care about the human life birthing the said fetus, you're not pro-life, you're pro-fetus. I do not. I, be I believe that every single person that God uh, has a plan for them even if they're unwanted, even if they came out of a horrible rape or something, I just, I truly believe that, let me, let that me, there's a, a reason for them. I want to, I want to separate this into two uh, distinct questions in the same area, right? Mm -hmm. There is the political implementation of a ban versus the personal feeling there should be, right? Do you personally feel abortion is wrong and shouldn't be allowed? Yes, that's how I personally feel. These hard right Christian nationalist Republicans believe that every life is special and that God has a plan for every single life. What about the life of the mother? It, it feels like once you're born and no longer in the womb, your life's not special anymore. God's plan ends for you once you exit the womb. Then you're on your own. No handouts, no freedoms. We're going to save the fetus over you because you're not a fetus anymore and we value fetus life over human life. Framing it around just the baby, just the fetus, takes away the personhood and autonomy of the mother who is a person who could be giving birth to that baby. The baby is a sack of cells. It doesn't know its mother was raped, but its mother sure does. It didn't bear that trauma, but its mother sure did. Not to mention, fighting for each child to be born 
doesn't take into account the quality of life at all. It doesn't take into account the the status that the mother is in socially, economically. It doesn't take into account the cost that goes into raising a child, especially these days. It doesn't take into account the complicated side effects that come with pregnancy, the complications of birth. If the baby has problems, it doesn't take into account any of that information. It just, if the fetus exists, it's coming out whether you like it or not. They care more about making sure that fetus is born than the quality of life that the mother has, will have, has had, who was once a fetus, by the way, you know, at one point in her life, she was too a fetus, but you don't care anymore because she was born and she's a, a full functioning human now. And we don't care about those. We just care about the unborn ones. The mothers die giving childbirth. It is mind blowing how much we have diminished, downplayed and glossed over exactly how dangerous pregnancy is. Pregnancy also increases a mother's risk of things like diabetes, high blood pressure, blood clots, strokes, heart attacks. And people are gonna argue with me like, oh, that's so rare. But the truth still remains. A woman's risk of all those things, including death, are higher pregnant than not pregnant. So yes, if we are going to give the contingency that abortions will be allowed in cases where the mother's life is in danger, that would apply to all cases of pregnancy, 100%. Everything they discuss is about the health of the fetus, the risk of the fetus. What about the risk for the mother? Why don't we care about the person giving, literally giving birth. Why don't we care about the human being? There's two, there's the baby and there's the mother. Why do we care about one and actively not care about the other? If you want healthy pregnancies, if you want healthy babies, access to reproductive health care, access to abortion is critical in making sure that happens. You know what else happens? When abortion is not accessible, women who want their babies and have complications who aren't allowed to have abortions and it ruins their reproductive system and they're never able to have children again. If you actually cared about that woman being able to have children, you would let her have access to abortion care for that pregnancy that had complications and went wrong so that in the future she'd be able to have more children. But now she has no children, and now she can't have children in the future. Also doesn't seem like it really furthers your plan here for having more babies. If it was actually pro-life, if it was actually about caring about the babies, we would have access to abortion for situations such as that. We would have more support for new mothers. We would have better maternity leave. We would have free health care in this country. We don't have any of those things. Proving that once that baby is born, who cares? It's not a fetus anymore. It's not supporting my argument in controlling women. I mean, in pro-life. Gosh, whoops. Oh, put the baby up for adoption. Put the baby in foster care. You know how many kids we have in foster care right now? In 2022, we had nearly 400,000, roughly, children in this country alone in foster care. Not adopted. Just living in foster care. So, great solution. You really care about those kids. <laughs> just stick them in foster care where I can't see them and it doesn't matter. And then they'll just probably become minimum wage workers, you know, so that I can have minimum wage workers because I don't want to do that. And then, you know, that's why I want women to have babies. I mean, I'm pro-life. Shoot. If you're pro-life and you don't care that women are dying because of these bans, then you're not pro-life. Call it what it is. You're anti-woman. That's it. You're pro-fetus. What it, just make sure it's accurate. Make sure it's an accurate representation of what you're actually all about. Because you're not pro-life. You're anything but.